ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಭ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದನಂದನ ಭ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಜಮುನ ತೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಜಮುನ ತೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದ ಪರಮಹಂಸ ಪರಿವಚಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತರ ಸದ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮದ ಶಿವಾಯಂಕರೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಲೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಕೀ ಅನಂತಕೋಟಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ವೃಂದ ಕೀ ನಾಮಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಹರಿದಾಸ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ಕೀ ಪ್ರೇಮಸೆ ಕಹೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಕದಾಧಾರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸ್ ಆದಿಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಪ ಗೋಪಿನಾಥ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಕುಂಜ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕುಂಜ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಿರಿ ಗೋವರ್ಧನ್ ಕೀ ಬ್ರಜಭೂಮಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಬೃಂದಾವನ ಧಾಮ ಕೀ ಮಾಯಪುರ ನವದ್ವೀಪ ಧಾಮ ಕೀ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥಪುರಿ ಧಾಮ ಕೀ ಗಂಗಾ ಮಯ್ಯ ಜಮುನಾ ಮಯ್ಯ ಕೀ ಭಕ್ತಿ ದೇವಿ ತುಳಸಿ ಮಹಾರಾಣಿ ಕೀ ಸಮವೇದ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕೀ ಹಿತಾಯಿ ಗೌರ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದಿ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ದ ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ದ ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ದ ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಸ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರಂಗ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋ ಜಾಧೀರ ಹೇ ನಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಯೇಷು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿರುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಕೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕೀ ನಂದನಾಯ ನಂದಗೋಪಕುಮಾರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಗುಣ ಸಂಯಂ ವೈ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿರ್ನಾತ್ಮನೋ ಗುಣ ಸತ್ವಂ ರಜಸ್ ತಮ ಇತಿ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಉತ್ಪತ್ತಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇತವ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿರ್ಗುಣ ಸಂ ಸಂಯಂ ವಾಯಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿರ್ನತ್ಮನೋ ಗುಣ ಸತ್ವ ರಜಸ್ತಮ ಇತಿ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಉತ್ಪತ್ತಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇತವ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿರ್ಗುಣ ಸಂಯಂ ವಾಯಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿರ್ನತ್ಮನೋ ಗುಣ ಸತ್ವ ರಜಸ್ತಮ ಇತಿ 
स्थिति उत्पत्ति अंत तव प्रकृतिर्गुना संयम वाय प्रकृतिर्नमनोगुना सत्व रजस्तम स्थिति उत्पत्ति अंत तव जीस प्रकृति material nature guna of the three modes samyam the original equilibrium vai indeed prakriti of nature na antamah sorry na atmanah not of the spirit soul gunah these modes सत्व गुडनेस रज पैशन तम इग्नरेन्स इति दस कॉल्ड स्थिति ऑफ द मेंटेनेंस ऑफ यूनिवर्सल क्रिएशन उत्पत्ति इट्स प्रोडक्शन अंत एंड इट्स एनालिएशन हेतव द कॉजेस translation nature exists originally as the equilibrium of the three material modes which pertain only to nature not to the transcendental spirit soul these modes goodness passion and ignorance are the effective causes of the creation maintenance and destruction of this universe purport by the disciples of his divine grace shrila ac bhakti vedanta swami shrila prabhupad purport in bhagavad gita 3.27 it is stated prakriti kriya manani guna karmani sarvasha ahankara vimudatma kartaham iti manyate the bewildered spirit soul under the influence of the three modes of material nature thinks himself to be the doer of activities which are in actuality carried out by nature the three modes of nature in their original state of equilibrium as well as the subsequent creation generated from the modes are vastly more powerful than the tiny living entity who is controlled by them the living entity thus cannot be accepted as the actual doer or creator within the material world the mode of goodness is symptomized by the experience of knowledge the mode of passion by the experience of work and the mode of ignorance by the experience of darkness these modes of material knowledge work and darkness have no real relation with the transcendental spirit soul who exhibits his own qualities of eternality bliss and knowledge the sandhini samvit and ladini potency of the supreme lord the material modes have no access into the kingdom of god in the unbounded atmosphere of which the eternal living entity is bent to live om agyan timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya 
चक्षुरुन्मीता ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातरिणे वाछाकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौरतिषे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्त अवतारम भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी दे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रियाद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे हरे कृष्णा सो दिस इज स्टिल द ब्यूटिफुल कंटिन्यूएशन फॉर लास्ट सो मेनी चैप्टर्स बिटवीन लॉर्ड कृष्ण एंड उद्धव एंड यूर इन द चैप्टर विच एंटाइटल द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ मटीरियल क्रिएशन Lord Lord Krishna is explaining <coughs> about the pract- primarily about the three modes of material nature and in which the purport quotes a beautiful verse prakriti kriya manani guna karmani sarvasya ahankara vimudatma kartaham iti manyate so this is uh, the situation of the material world that when the prakriti the modes of nature are the doers but ahankara vimudatma kartaham iti manyate but the tiny living entity i like the word tiny year in the purport is used the tiny living entity it gives us a very clear cut uh, understanding of what we all really are the tiny living entity vimudatma vimuda foolish absolutely foolish living entity he thinks that he is the doer kartaham iti manyate it is quite stupid it is quite foolish i mean if you just imagine that a tiny boy you know who is you know who is trying to push a big rock and he is just works very hard for the boy it is impossible to push the rock mm-hmm. so the a huge his huge father well built father he says okay son you just close your eyes and just touch your finger and the rock will move and he said oh really yeah he said it will move and then he, he closes his eyes and he touches the rock and the rock starts moving he said and the father said don't open the eyes but don't open the eyes and but what is happening the father is pushing the rock because father can do it but because the 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 child is in ignorance because he is closed the eyes he doesn't know and he thinks karta hum iti manyate i am the doer see i did it and he not only does it but it's he brags about it to everybody you know something what i did today i closed my eyes and still i should push the rock i mean if you if you just visualize this scenario you can understand it how 
stupid and how crazy it is. So the one of the important aspects of spiritual life uh, is, or rather, one of the aspects of self-realization is to understand who the self is, and 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 we understand the self is. We always subserve into the Lord. But it's also important to understand how tiny the self is. Uh, to the, till the extent we do not understand and not only understand or not only hear, but keep on, keep on reminding ourselves that how tiny we are, uh, we will still feel every now and then, kartaham iti manyate. And then Krishna will call us vimuda. Kartaham iti, I am the doer. Many times we, we just so often, at least I, I, it applies very much to what I was thinking about myself, that we, we speak so many beautiful slokas and it's become so much part of our vocabulary, not realizing what this verse is all about. When I was focusing on this, this verse and specifically trying to understand the gunas, the three modes of material nature, the gunas, it made so much sense that, oh my goodness, I've forgotten this. This beautiful words that Krishna speaks in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, the Kartahamiti Maneti, because it is just so easy and just so, in one sense, natural for us to think that I am the doer. But Krishna says, Vimuda. Because who is doing this? Prakriti. In the material world, the Prakriti is doing everything. She is the doer. You are not the doer. Very, very interesting. You know, I just came across a a statement by Stephen Hawkins, I'm sure you all know him, a brilliant uh, scholar from the Oxford University. I went to London, I visited Oxford, I went to his, that time he was still alive. So, you know, he, we, we happened to meet his students. But he speaks a beautiful uh, uh, statement. Of course, you know, please understand, he was very proud to call himself an atheist was absolutely a hardcore, well-proclaimed atheist. So his statement is obviously filled with atheism. But it's interesting to understand. It, it makes us understand, it gives a, a perspective of what we really are. A person who, who was absolutely brilliant. I mean, we, we know of a devotee in London, uh, uh, you know, very active devotee, in his younger days, he was actually got, he is also a brilliant student, he was a brilliant student. And he actually had got a chance to work under Stephen Hawkins, to be his, uh, to be his student. But you, you all know Stephen Hawkins had a, had a serious disease, you, you all know his, if you have seen his photograph, he had a serious disease, he was on wheelchair for last 70, 80 years. And, but Krishna had given him such brilliant brain substance. So anybody who was going to be his assistant had to really not only be his assistant but also had to do his work of feeding him food, taking care of him and that's because that he was, he was, he was actually completely wheelchair ridden if not bed ridden. But he was a brilliant, brilliant person. Please, uh, you know, you can study about him if you get chance. Not what he wrote but about him. Brilliant guy. What he says is, very interesting, please give a, make a note. You will really understand of what is, how tiny we are. So just, I said, what he says is, he says, we are just a chemical scum on a moderate size planet. Now, what is chemical scum? I mean, and for him, please understand, you can, you can replace this chemical scum to a tiny living entity, one ten thousand tip of a hair. But for him, everything is a chemical. A scum is nothing but the residual, the, the, most, the most useless part of a chemical. So what he says is, it's just a chemical scum on a moderate sized planet orbiting around a very average star in the outer suburb of one among a hundred billion galaxies. <laughs> I, I love the description. I mean, you, you just imagine yourself sitting at Sri Sri Radha Gopinath temple or maybe, you know, imagine yourself sitting in a, in some position where you think you are the doer, you know, you're sitting on your chair and you are in a cabin or you are 
in your department or you are in your job or you are wherever and just imagine you are here and what we are and what is Stephen Hawking is telling us what we realize is one ten thousand tip of a hair a small chemical scum in his words in a moderate sized planet not even a great planet because if I was studying the earth planet is so small that if you have seven earth planets put together in one line it is just equal to the rings of Saturn I mean Saturn is much much more bigger if you seven earths put together one after another it just equals just about equals to the rings of the Saturn what talk of Jupiter it is it's just it's not even comparable so he's saying it is just the scum of moderate sized planet very small size if you see a perspective for those who have seen uh, if you have visited Nehru planetarium or you have seen some galaxy shows you know they, they show it beautifully they just zoom out <laughs> Yeah, and then they zoom out and then they show you that, okay, what's, what, what, you know, what's your Bombay and then zoom out. You get some experience about it from the Google Maps if you do zoom out. But Google will just show about the Earth. What he's saying is it's just in a moderate sized planet orbiting around a very average star. <laughs> I mean, he calls it the sun as an average star and nothing. I mean, of course, we know sun is sun. I mean, it is Surya Bhagavan. But he said it's a have a star in the outer suburb of one amongst a hundred billion galaxies. So means it's like we are Earth is like the Virar planet, Virar, outer suburb of one of the hundred billions of galaxies. There are billions of galaxies. You know, we have solar system and this. If you see, this, there are beautiful pictures just showing the relative position of our solar system with, between this whole, it is called the Virgo. Uh, galaxy that we are in okay that's our galaxy and there are billions of galaxies this is from the scientific perspective forget talking about the perspective from what we know from the shastras and that's what Prabhupada also gave up in his own beautiful way Prabhupada was speaking to Tamal Krishna Goswami and he spoke the same thing that you know Tamal Krishna of course both of them are worshipable to us we have no right, but both of them are great personalities but Prabhupada as a guru was trying to teach his disciple and I said that what is this? You, you are in, you are in, you are in, you know, uh, San Francisco, which is a small city in California, which is a small state in America, which is a, a, a place in uh, Earth planet. And then he zooms out, zooms out, zooms out, and he said, and still you think you are the controller. It is worth to think about the beautiful story about Lord Brahma when he visits Lord Krishna. I remember it was my favorite story when I was. The, if, almost it, I heard it in almost a week's time since after I became a devotee. I was, that, I was reading The Coming Back. That was the first book I read. And then my brother, uh, he told me this story. I said, this is beautiful. I said, Lord Brahma came and, and as, as Radhanath Maharaj explains so beautifully, he said, please tell Brahma has come. I said, which Brahma? is a four-headed Brahma. Because what you are proud of is what you are saying, what you said. Who are you? Say, me Gujarat say, if you are proud of Gujarat, me Marathi Manus, I am Marathi. Huh, something. So what you are proud of, you speak that. So Brahma is proud of his four heads, because nobody has four heads, I, am, I have four heads. So you go, so Krishna says, okay, I am going to use that, what is proud. Come in, come in, come in. And then Krishna just, you know, he calls all the other Brahmas, and then Brahma sees eight, sixteen, you know, on and on and on and on and on. You can use the calculator and say, five one two one zero two four. Billions of millions of heads, and he finds himself insignificant. Yeah. Lord Brahma finds himself insignificant. Obviously, if if I speak about the glories of Lord Brahma, we can have the whole lecture about the glorious position of Lord Brahma. And we just you hear the glory of Lord Brahma, and then we speak. This Brahma was feeling him insignificant. You can imagine what is our situation, right? So please, my dear friends, it's very very important to understand before we even really. Uh, you know, try to fathom the glory of Krishna, try to fathom the glory of the spiritual world, try to fathom, you know, the, the glory of, of uh, the bhakti process. A very interesting and important part of, the, of, of our process is to understand our infinitesimal, small, tiny, insignificant position. Are we all convinced, at least right now? I mean, at least, because it's so difficult. In the next moment, we are not convinced.
But at least right now, let's oh, say, yes, I am tiny. This is nothing, I am nothing. Because what, what existence do we, I mean, I was, sometimes we like laughing, right? And we throw our, throw our tantrums, we, we show, throw our weight over people. But what is our existence? What are we? Nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Ahankara vimudatma. Pride. Ahankara. Kartaham iti manyate. Beautiful words. I mean, this verse is, is my favorite words from now on. Prakriti kriya manani guna karmani sarvasya ahankara vimudatma. Kartaham iti manyate. And then we think how. So, so before we even begin to, uh, to really understand the, the glory of. Uh, so Srila Prabhupada also, if you, if, you, if you read, I was even today morning we played a class on the, in the altar while we were dressing, uh, dressing service. Prabhupada speaks about the three modes of material nature. How many times Prabhupada speaks again and again and again and again about the three modes of material nature. And here I found a very interesting conversation of Prabhupada. Prabhupada says, he explains that there's this whole world is nothing but it is not, it is, it's, it's real, it's not allegory, it is not a, uh, it's not a statement made out of some poetic uh, liberty that an author is taking. It is a real statement, it said that this whole material entire universe is a product of the three gunas. The whole creation, material creation is a product of these three gunas, a sattva, raja and tama. And Prabhupada explains, Prabhupada analyzes, is that he, analyzed, he connected this sattva, raja and tama to colors and Prabhupada used a beautiful, he said, just like we have primary three colors. You all know three colors, red, blue and yellow. These are the three primary colors. He said, these are the three primary colors, he said, but you mix them and Prabhupada says, we get, you mix them in some proportion, then you get green, orange and pink and so on and many colors. So the three becomes six. The six become nine, the nine become 81, the 81, and that's how you different proportions you use. And that's how the whole creation is created. And Prabhupada uses a beautiful statement. This was a conversation in Mumbai, right in our city. He said, thus, material nature is the greatest artist. What a beautiful statement. Because, because material nature colors, you have, you know, like how an artist takes a, on a canvas, he just does some color and then he mixes some color and does some forty color and mixes some color. That's, I said, wow, it's beautiful. And how, what beautiful artist is, is Mother Nature? That she just draws the whole creation through these different colors, the gunas. And that's how all, everything that exists. Hmm? So I think today we will be going to discuss about this very important aspect. We have been hearing about these three gunas ever since the day one of our Krishna consciousness. Hmm? But at least I realized that the words used here is equilibrium. These gunas always should exist. They existed at the time of creation in equilibrium and they should continue to exist in equilibrium. And the problem is the most of the time we find this whole gunas completely out of equilibrium or what we call it disequilibrium. It is, it is not balanced. Now, you know, before we really go into understanding, you know, if, if you are, I think we mentioned this some other time or maybe not here, that this balance is such an important thing. Like, you know, we, we have this, this particular uh, phenomenon in the body called vertigo. What is, what is vertigo? That this some little liquid, some, uh, Gorang Priya Prabhu, I'm not sure about medically what is called, some, some tube here, you are a doctor, and there's some liquid which just goes off balance and you just, you can't even balance. You can't just, you just, it's just, there's some, something, little liquid here, or some eustachian tube or something, I don't know, something. And it just goes off and you just, you can't even stand properly. If, you, if, if, if you're sitting on a chair, see for yourself, 
You will never sit your legs like this. You will always have a legs like this. Because this is the only way you can be balanced. Naturally. Try for yourself. Nand, you are sitting there. You, <laughs> you, you, I was observing, you can never sit. When you're sitting, you cannot sit like you. When you walk, you walk like this. But when you sit, you walk sit like this. Because this is the only way you can balance. Because you, if you sit like this, you stand up, you will fall. If you sit, if you sit like this, you stand up, you'll fall. You have to stand up like this and then that's how, I mean, it is so basic that you can ignore it. That's how basic balancing is. But it's so critical in life that balancing anything is so critical. Yes, you understand? Anything you balance is so critically important. Whether it is your food, whether it is your thoughts, whether it is your l practical living, everything has to be balanced, has to be in equilibrium. If it is not in equilibrium, it is off balance. And if you're off balance, you fall down. Very simple. Your spiritual life, it has to be in balance. And that's why today we're going to discuss about the gunas. That's what we are made up of. That was this whole material world is made up of. And what are these gunas? First, let's understand what are these gunas. It may be a little basic, but we'll try to make it interesting. It'll be interestingly basic. So, so, so what is sattva guna? Sattva guna is all about you know, intelligence. Rajaguna is all about energy. And Tamaguna is all about uh, ignorance. I mean, uh, about substance or about inertia. Right? So, so what, is, what are the qualities? Let's just understand what are the qualities of Sattva Guna. Before we even try to understand, to balance something, we should know what it is all about. And how does it apply to me? And how, what, are, what are those particular modes? in me, in, in what proportion and everything, and then we learn to balance them. So what is Sattva Guna? Sattva Guna is all about intelligence, it's all about virtue and goodness, it creates harmony, balance and stability. Please understand, this is Sattva Guna. What is Sattva Guna? It creates balance, harmony, stability, goodness and virtue. Hmm? Very interesting, I was just analyzing, what is, what is the, what is the, if, if I mean those you know, we have scalars and vectors, those who studied physics. Uh, scalar is simply a quantity, but vector is a direction. We all know that. When you have a line, but you do an arrow in front, that becomes a vector quantity. So distance is a scalar. Displacement is a vector. Right? Because we, we give a direction. Similarly, what is the direction? We, we have a sattva guna as a, as a scalar quantity, but what is the direction? If you, if you vectorize sattva guna, then the Sattva Guna is all about inward and upward motion. Sattva Guna is all inward and it takes you upward. Interesting, right? There's a quality of Sattva. It, it, is, it, it is all intrinsic by nature and it takes you upward. And Sattva provides happiness and contentment of a lasting nature. It is, the, it is a very interesting, one of the principal qualities of Sattva Guna is that it gives clarity, wideness and peace. Very interesting. Sattva Guna is a Guna which gives you clarity, wideness. You know, we talk about taking photographs. And nowadays in our camera, in our phones, we have wide angle, over those who are camera, wide angle lenses. So more width you have, the more vision you have and more vision you have more thing you can capture so sattva guna is all about virth is all about clarity and it's 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 all about peace so i was analyzing why was it that yudhishthir maharaj able to answer the yaksha prashna and not the other pandavas they they, they came they asked very interesting because you, and you, we all know Govind Prabhu has taken a beautiful seminar on Yaksha Prashna in detail. How each question is so, is, is like a cryptic question, each of the questions. Right? And Yudhishthir Maharaj brilliantly answered each of them. Why? Because Yudhishthir Maharaj was always in Sattva Guna. His, his personality denotes a sattva guni personality, a person who is sattva guna, always in sattva guna. If you see, I mean, if you see the Pandavas, let's take, 
Yudhishthir Maharaj, Bhima, Arjun, Nakul Sardev, we can, we can keep, they were not there today, so they, we don't, we don't, but Yudhishthir Maharaj signifies Sattva Guna. So he had complete clarity and that we, that's why the answer, I was just, I was just reading the Yaksha Prashna, what clarity that he has and that's the quality of Sattva Guna, my dear friends, let us all understand, if we want to be clear, if we want to be wide, if we want to be peaceful, if we want to be completely happy in situation, contented and that's what we all need, these are the qualities which are offered by Sattva Guna. Rajaguna. Rajaguna is a quality of change, activity and turbulence. Hmm? It, it, it introduces a disequilibrium and upsets the existing balance. Raja is just changes all the balance and completely makes the whole thing unbalanced, disequilibrium. And as we say, if you give a vector quantity to it, Raja is all about action, it is outward motion and it always goes in a direction of seeking personal benefit. The direction is upward, upward means towards God in Sattva Guna. But what is the direction of Raja? Raja means it is outward motion, it is all about action and it causes self-seeking action that leads to fragmentation and disintegration. Please understand. It is required. Please understand. We are not saying because all these three are required at some point in time. But we need to attribute them their qualities and use them as and when they are required. You use the wrong thing at the wrong time, then you will be in trouble. So yes, Raja is action. Raja gives you that, that dynamism. But men, most of the time, Raja is, if not used properly, it is outwardly because it is action oriented. And it, it leads towards self-seeking action which leads to fragmentation and disintegration. And in short, Raja is, is stimulates pleasure owing to unbalance and its forces causes distress and conflict. So Raja Guna, if not used properly, adequately, if not balanced by proper Sattva Guna at some point in time, it will lead to distress and conflict. <coughs> Tamaguna, what does Tamaguna mean? It, it, it is a quality of dullness, Darkness, inertia, and it has a quality of veiling. We, have, we call it the veil, right? The veil. Veil is what covers a face of a lady, for example. This, so this quality of, of ignorance is like a, it has a veiling quality. The direction of Tama is, it is downward motion. It causes decay and disintegration. Sattva Gun goes up. Raja Gun goes out. And Tamaguna goes down. It causes decay and disintegration. Tama brings about ignorance and delusion in the mind and promotes insensitivity, loss of awareness and sleep. I'm sure we know this, but we are trying to just first understand what are these qualities all about? Sattva, Raja and Tama. We just speak Sattva, Raja, Tama. But what are these about? Sattva, we understand it gives, it is, it is positive, it, is, it, is, it gives rise to clarity. Raja, it gives rise to self-centeredness. And Tama gives rise to ignorance. In short, in brief. So, <clears throat> if, if, you, if you're trying to connect this, I mean, Krishna does so beautifully that he connects so many things, foods in the mode of Sattva Gun, Ramaj, Raja Gun, Tama Gun, then everything, the words in the form of, beautifully, because everything you do is in the three modes. So, in the, so our day when you are, you know, when, sattva means to wake up. Raja means to dream. And stama means to in deep sleep. Just to give an understanding of what raja means to dream, to be action, to do something. Because in dream you don't sit, you are doing some action. But sattva is all about waking up. He has to wake up. So it is only in Sattva Guna you are actually awake, otherwise in both the other Gunas you are actually sleeping. One is dreaming stage, other is deep slumber stage. Now let us understand what is the connection of these Gunas that Krishna speaks here with the mind. Because the mind is it, it's important because how does it control the mind? The mind is basically... It's all about sattva, it creates clarity, which gives rise to truth 
and gives light and concentration. Tama is in the factor of gives, I mean, so Sattva Guna, when it comes to the mind, it gives rise to truth, Sattva, Satya. And similarly, the, it, the Tama Guna and uh, Raja Guna gives rise to agitation and delusion. Hmm? So he's explained that Raja and Tamagun usually they work together. And what happens usually, if, if, it's very interesting to understand that Rajagun gives rise to expression of energy, gives rise to a lot of energy, gives rise to a lot of uh, act activity, action. And after a lot of activity and action, it will lead to exhaustion and that's when Tamagun prevails. Now we are not talking about activity only in the mode of, in the, in the means of bodily activity. And here it is very important to understand that, that how a successful charismatic leader or even a devotee or whatever we are, why is it, why is it that if, if he is no, if he's constantly working or she is constantly working for, 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 for getting something? Many times, we are working hard to achieve something, right? Most of the time, we are achievers. <clears throat> but if you are not, if you are, if you are in the mood of achieving, and you achieve something, why is it that many times the leaders who are successful, they experience depression and loneliness? If, if you analyze, many times you meet these very successful people, they are very lonely. So it's very beautifully explained by Shivaram Swami Maharaj. He explains that what is the reason why are successful people, and this will very much apply to our devotee community as well, why are successful people many times found lonely? He said because they are constantly working in Rajaguna. Our, our Eastern society obviously does facilitate a lot of activities. But is the goal of our society activity? The goal of society is consciousness. Because Prabhupada named our society as International Society for Krishna Consciousness. It is a consciousness-based society and not a activity based society but if you see many many times we are very much focused towards achieving things right in the morning we have a to do list as we say that you know for a hammer everything looks like a nail and for a chronic multitasker everything looks like a task you understand when we talk about multitasking so that means everything is a task. That means the moment you get up in the morning, it's a task. I will take bath. I will, I will chant my Gayatri. It's a task. I will chant my rounds. It's a task. I'll do Guru Puja. I'll dance. One, two, three, four. It's a task. Just like for a hammer, everything looks like a nail. For a chronic multitasker, everything looks like a task. That means you do tasks. We are only task-oriented. We are only result-oriented people. And we become like that. And because we are living in a fast-paced world, we are, whether we like it or not, whether we know it or not, whether we realize it or not, we are becoming extremely task-oriented. And that is why we are constantly in what is called Rajaguna. Because Rajaguna is all about task, it's all about achieving. Achieve and see yourself. You analyze yourself, you know, after the class, sit down and see. Most of the time in our day, we are here to achieve things. We are achievers. Or rather, we want to be achievers. And that is why Shivaram Maharaj makes a brilliant point. From Rajaguna, a constant engagement in Rajaguna will slowly, slowly lead to Tamaguna. It's natural. You, you, just, you just slowly go down. And Tamaguna, when you work hard, what do you do? You sleep, right? So that's physically you see. Passion leading to ignorance. Ha. Of course, that sleep is required. So I'm not saying tama is bad. Because that tama, you need to be in tamaguna to get rest. 
so to, you are using that tamaguna to to you know rejuvenate your body but just drawing a parallel further if you are constantly doing activities to achieve things you are an achiever you are a charismatic smart leader you have achieved things yes i have achieved i have done this 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 to my credit the sad part is if you are not focused on sadhana and you are not trying to go upwards and inwards as satoguna is all about you are trying to just go outwards and doing things to achieve as rajaguna is all about and if you are not in satoguna then slowly but surely you will go downwards and that was is all about tamaguna and that's where tamaguna is all about loneliness and depression depression is a sign of tamaguna having no friends have been lonely believe me my friends there are people the more dynamic they look the more activity they show externally don't judge by the way don't be judged because we spoke last class about being judgmental we should not judge but there's a good possibility the more external fizz you see the more internal hollowness is there and that is why these people they are very dynamic oh you say wow they they give the wow factor to all of people but internally when they are alone in their rooms when alone they are in the places they are absolutely lonely depressed people because why because they constantly operate in rajaguna and leading to damaguna and please let's not think that this is not apply to devotees we could be chanting in tamag in, in rajaguna we, we could be practically living our whole day practically the whole day from morning 4:30 even if you get up at 4 o'clock you say well i got up at 4 o'clock brahma murta but it is if you are rajaguni if you sing as a task you are rajaguni your whole day is filled with rajaguna in achieving things and constantly associating with rajaguna for a long period of time will give rise to tamaguna which is depression and loneliness and many other things that come up hmm? so it is very important how the mind works hmm? that satguna is the guna which creates stability <clears throat> and and we should we should all understand that we will discuss a little later on how do we really convert how do we really get the whole thing into equilibrium how to get this gunas which is too much of tamas or too much of rajas how to really grow up and make it satva and not into tama we'll discuss that there is a whole beautiful process and it is it is a part of our process that we do but we need to be cognizant we need to be aware of this process now we'll talk about you know a, a mental constitution on other how do we and how do we know if many times we all want to know okay what is my nature what is my personality right maybe we love to and there are some forms and i like to fill the form i have seen every time i do a seminar and i say okay you know by doing this you will come to know what oh what sure everybody does it because we all want to do what is called self introspection self revelation is very important for us what we really are so of course you know the class doesn't allow me but i i have prepared a whole mental constitution chart on if 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 you are doing this this then which guna you are you can take from i can send it to the brahmachari uh, you know this thing but you know we'll just discuss few points i said sit at a particular aspect of need of sleep hmm? now please understand nothing is bad is not that if you are satguna is bad or tamaguna is bad but you will know what guna is prominent and if you compile this whole list you will know which guna is prominently over over you so need of sleep if it is little it is satguni prabhupad <laughs> absolute sudha satvaguni i couldn't imagine how can somebody function with just just less sleep uh, so if you have little is satvaguna moderate is rajaguna high is tamaguna speech hmm? if you are calm and peaceful and you we, we we have any any person that comes in front of you calm and peaceful ha huh? sangitan prabhu bhakti rasamrit maharaj i mean do 
you do you are ex- agitated you are excited but they will say okay shidam prabhu i will tell you it's calm and peaceful satvaguni agitated means rajagun and dull means tamagun from speech cleanliness high cleanliness satvaguna moderate rajaguna low tamaguna when you are working you are working for if you are selfless you know what you are if you are, if you work for your personal goals you are rajaguni and you are lazy you are not working at all you are tamaguni now please ask yourself you know we are supposed to be selfless sarva upadir vilir muktam tat paratvena nirmalam this is brilliant to quote brilliant to know and brilliant to give ex- exam on bhakti bhakti rasamrit sindhu the definition of bhakti practice i was discussing with one brahmachari today morning so many things we speak so many things we hear seldom do we follow the one of them selfless is satvaguni but ask yourself am i doing work am i doing preaching am i doing speaking am i doing anything for personal goals please be sure you are a juguni accept it at least to yourself may be may be difficult to accept to others but accept for yourself and even dull lazy of course you know what you are you are you are in tamaguna similarly anger if you are rarely angry you are satvaguni you are sometimes angry you are rajaguni and similarly very very uh, uh, frequently angry you are tamaguni hmm? forgiveness very interesting a satguni person forgiveness easily he forgives easily it it with with effort if you if you take effort to forgive you are rajaguni and you hold grudge for a long period of time hmm? you are tamaguni you must know that hmm? truthfulness you always truthful Yudhishthir Maharaj, Satguni. Most of the time, it is Rajaguni, and rarely. So I mean, this is the constitution. So what the point that we are trying to drive is that every aspect of your life—creativity, spiritual study, concentration, memory—we have everything. Every aspect is done in various modes, and and of course, many times different modes affect you. in different ways sometimes you are satguni but your constitution you understand that because ultimately the purpose is what is the purpose is to slowly what is it here we are trying to create equilibrium we'll discuss about the equilibrium as we mentioned we have just i'm sorry we got running short of time so what is it that we are trying to do what we are trying to do is if we have tamaguna how to create equilibrium we need to first break the tamaguna and how do we break the tamaguna by developing rajaguna from the mental inertia to self motivated action very interesting first thing what we need to do if we are if you find ourselves ourselves heavily tamaguni you cannot you cannot get a person from tamaguna state to satvaguna not possible you need to get him into what we call it moving into mental inertia to self motivated action you first lead him to first okay you are you first do some action no wonder if you analyze i was just analyzing it this statement i heard it and there's a prabhupad in the beginning days of iskon prabhupad gives so many activities he said do this do that book distribution do prasadam distribution do go to harinam and sing okay you have nothing to do go on the street and sing kirtan why was it if you if you see deep within prabhupad was such a brilliant every many of the most of people were mostly in tamaguna platform and to get them sit and chant hare krishna hare krishna difficult to so, so prabhu said first from tamaguna you have to break the tama you have to break the tamas get them out and how do we get them out you get them out by from completely uh, inertia to self motivated action and that's a prabhu created what we call marathon oh five books 10 books some motivation right raja you, for raja you need motivation so you he created that and then from um, from breaking the tama and break, getting into self motivated action which is raja you slowly develop from self motivated action to selfless service 
you cannot get a person from inertia to selfless service not possible you you have to have a gradation a strong gradual process of raising a person so for us also we need to understand we cannot bring ourselves to the satguna immediately if you are in tamaguna you, you rise to rajaguna you do action and slowly bring that action as we say from self motivated action to selfless action and then slowly slowly from satvaguna to coming to shuddha satva by chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare ha so to this is very important to break the tam of moving the tamas to rajas what i personally would call this is personal healing we will give this is personal healing to how from bringing ourselves from tama to raja is personal healing and 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 how does it work what do we do first you need to wake up and begin to change from first you need to realize you need to know what you really are first need to come out of tamaguna and that's why we did this exercise of where you are just to analyze okay first let me know where i am many a times we don't even have time to do introspection because so much of rajaguna we are just so busy doing things we don't even know who i am why i am why i do what i do right the first thing to rise from tam raja tamaguna to rajaguna is to be awake and find recognize what we are confront our pains and and see what are the various things that we have ignored or suppressed in last so many years there are so many suppressed ignored needs wants when you suppress something and you are ignoring it it it's is tamaguna you need to re, you need to find out what they are really are and then you add the action to it and when you add action to it you need to do something about it you need to bring it to a situation which gives you gives rise to what is called self motivated action at least some action that be, that will help me that will make it to rajaguna and then from rajaguna we we, we rise if, if the first thing from tama to raja is called self healing then the second from rajas to satva we can call it you know healing with the help of i mean helping the humanity because we become a larger family satguna is all about wideness as we said right we discussed is all about wideness is more all about clarity so then what does it do that when you come when you when moving the rajas to tamas what happens you you depersonalize your problems and you start seeing the problems of everybody see first of all if you are ignorant you don't even know you are suffering a person who is ignorant is who is just falling in a gutter he doesn't know he is suffering so first you bring him bring him out and then you realize that you know you are suffering oh you are suffering oh bhai what should i do i am suffering what do i do about it then you start doing some actions to to really re relieve yourself of suffering that is action in rajaguna but the purpose is not to be in rajaguna the idea is to rise to the satguna because it is only in satguna that you can connect to the higher aspects of life and the satguna is if you are constantly dealing with your problems constantly i centric me and mine which is rajaguna then you cannot so you convert that self motivated action to selfless action hmm? not me but we 180 degrees change it to we and this slow process the gradual process will slowly help us to bring about the equilibrium uh, in our in our in our lives and 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 that is why if we understand that the main thing that really adds equilibrium ultimately there is a beautiful propads uh, uh speaks about the five elements the five elements the mind is the seer we created a pictog pictograph of this very interesting and the mind is a seer and then then that whatever the 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 mind receives from the senses the intelligent the intelligence is processing i mean we all with me 
is like whole diagram the eyes the mind the intelligence processes and what does intelligence do in the processed data it goes to the ego ego is the modifier very interesting whatever the process data is goes to the ego ahankar and from ahankar based on how you modify it it becomes sattva rajas or tamas so please understand the process of chanting hare krishna maha mantra trinadapi sunichena taroreva saishna manina manadena kirtaniya sada hari the glorious chanting the holy names i think we are celebrating one week of holy name week something uh, about the glories of the holy name so important to understand that with all this equilibrium we are trying to discuss it is the easiest to do it because if you just purify your ego because it is the ego where everything the intelligence gives the process data to the ego and the way ego ego is what it is the modifier is is like it's it modifies and if you see something if, for example how did haridas thakur see beating in marketplace people are beating him right how did he see it his ego processed it in a way where he wanted to forgive the people who were executing him can you imagine just imagine if you are beaten up <laughs> and if your ego is in a mode of raja you want to beat that other person up so what happens in trains if somebody stamps you <coughs> why because you know you know you have action the action is possible the intelligence intelligence gives to the ego and the ego says i am in raja it, how dare he does this to me gives rise to fight but the same ego if it is purified it is completely pure like haridas thakur i was imagining how can he do the way he did it because his ego was so damn purified i'm sorry so clear so crystal clear purified that he processed that input of getting beaten in not one not two not three but 22 market places and he's praying to the lord that please forgive them how is it possible because his ego was purified so we be really whatever we discuss is is very important to understand the whole scientific the whole process of satva raja tama but in one sense it is a very in one sense very easy process but yes very difficult simply purify your false ego there is a false ego which gives you the understanding of what what whether to see it in a satva gun raja gun or tama gun if you have a purified ego and that's why you see the same thing if you are in a satva guna you will see it differently but the same thing you, you many times you are in a tama guna tama guna is overpowering you you see the same thing in a different way many times you know you are in a satvik guna everything is fine and you reach home and uh, you know the food is not cooked i said no no problem i'll wait I, i'll wait you know you, you you must be busy i'm talking about grihasthas or for that matter about you know where is the book i want this book in library me a book nahi hai no problem we will find if a satguni will find it but the same situations the same thing rajgun where is the book and where is the food why is not ready yet you, you are you getting it right so the modes is all about how the ego is modifying the inputs hmm? so let us all please understand uh, we can uh, i'll just end with this one simple statement let us all basically be tamsically grounded to earth rajasically passionate about our work and sadhana and satvically reaching the goal so we can use all three we can be you know tamsically grounded to the earth tamsic means what is tam tamas tamas it keeps you grounded to so use that tamas to be grounded Hmm? so that we can rajasikli rajasik means you need passion you need passion what passion to achieve krishna lotus feet achieve the situation where we can make prabhu pad proud of us we can make our guru maharaj proud of us so we can be rajasikli passionate for that so that we can satvikli reach our goal the kingdom of god thank you very much hare krishna shila prabhu pad ki shri shri radha gopinath ki I'm sorry for the ten minutes of our time. Please pardon me. Manas raju gunna hai. Raju gunna mati tamu gunna kya karna jaye? Raju gunna mati tamu gunna jaye na. Actually, tumhe continuously raju gunna deal kare karo. Tumhe tumhe suka ho raju mein kam karo bo bodo. Tumhe thagi jao na tumhe. To thagi jao to suda thagi jao unu raju gunna thegi na mat tamu gunna thegi. 
સિમિલરલી તમે બહુ કામ કરો યુ એચીવ 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 પર તમે સંગ ના કરો 